please have a seat, Rattlers and friends. See, see, we were going to keep it dignified too. But y'all had to go there. Where is Reggie? Hey, Reggie. Like I said last night, man, you've grown tremendously. You're able to read now. We really, we really appreciate what they've done for you, Bethune Cookman and Dr. Berry. We got to get you some kind of antiperspirant, man. Because I thought, you know, I thought you were going to sweat yourself to death. But y'all did a, y'all did a good job. But we all know who the champion is. Where's my belt? Come on up here, man. <laughs> well, I would, I would end it right here because this says it all. What did it say right there? The number one public HBCU in the nation. I want to commend Bethune Cookman, however, because you continue to move up in the high school ranks. <laughs> you continue that. And we are there to support you, by the way. That's why I call your name so much because ain't nobody out of Volusia County ever heard of you, right? <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to get you there. We're going to get you there. Now, I, I got a lot of flack last year from the Bethune-Cookman folks. You know, when I got back home to landlocked Tallahassee, you know, I had all kinds of toilet paper on my home and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they were upset for one primary reason. They said, you know, I stood up here using all those two-syllable words, right? <laughs> Trying to impress people with words like football, <laughs> study hall. <laughs> and then I threw in a third-syllable word every now and then, academics, right? <laughs> but that's OK. Y'all are a great institution built on the shoulders of one of America's finest. But we all know. <laughs> We all know that it was um, October the 3rd, 1887, that really changed the course of higher education for black folks in the state of Florida. And we're just so proud to be part of this great institution that we call FAMU. Now, you can call it FAMU if you want. Just don't say it out there on that side of the room, right? <laughs> that might start a fight. So I do want to, once again, I, like everybody else, well, by the way, Dr. Berry, my wife and I were trying to figure out, why were you talking so long? I mean, clearly it was longer than seven minutes, more like 27 minutes. I said, because he knows he won't be back here next year, so he's trying to get it all in. He's trying to get it all in. So you can come and take some of my time if you like, right? But you know you're not going to be back. But anyways, <laughs> that's not my business. Let me tend to my own business. I also want to thank uh, Florida Blue uh, for being the principal sponsor for this event over the last several years. I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. And I know, where's Tony Jenkins? Did he leave already? He had to leave because he couldn't take it, being the <laughs> beast stone cookman representative, but we really thank you for that because your sponsorship makes a huge difference uh, for this event. And I want to thank all of the sponsors out there who contributed to the well-being of these great institutions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also, I want to acknowledge the members of our board who are here. There are several members, including our chair, new chair, Ms. Christine Hopper. Christine Hopper. We have the chair of our foundation board of directors here as well, Ms. Lisa LeBou. She's uh, members of the foundation board of directors. Thank you, too, for being the stewards of all of our resources that don't add up to a billion, but we're going we're gonna to get there, right? We're going to get there sooner or later. But thank you all so much uh, for your stewardship. And then, of course, I want to acknowledge my real boss, my wife, Sharon, 
of 39 years. Thank you, Sarah. And so uh, the year 39 probably resonates extremely well with the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats because that's how long it takes a freshman to graduate from the institution. But y'all keep trying. And we can help you out. Keep sending those few that we can take. We'll try to take any more that you send us and turn them into the great Rattlers that they are destined to be. And in case you haven't heard, we are looking for a provost now. In case you haven't heard. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Watson. You know, you made the right decision to come to FAMU. Don't you get caught up. <laughs> Don't you get caught up over here. Because at least as an interim at FAMU, you get to come back, right? <laughs> ain't no coming back over here. They all gone or in jail. So, did I say that out loud? All right, let me, let me take all that back. Anyway. I do want to, I mean, Dr. Berry was ex extremely correct in how people can mistake what they see or hear and read, in particular on the internet. Um, if you really want to experience this, you go out and there is a, uh, a link out there, or whatever it is, I don't know, that attests to what the admissions requirements are for Bethune-Cookman University, right? Y'all have seen those, right? Y'all say no, right? No test scores, no high school diploma, no brain. And for every student who comes and get the premier scholarship, they'll get a number two pencil and a pack of noun laters. Anyway, that way you're gonna continue to attract the best and brightest students in America there is no doubt about it. But we want to talk about, for real though, the partnership that we have, the fellowship that we have as HBCUs. Because what we do, Dr. Berry, no one does it any better, right? At Florida a University, in addition to being the top public HBCU in the nation, we are ranked 21st in the nation in terms of transforming the lives of students who come to us with low socioeconomic means, as attested by the social mobility rankings of U.S. News and World Reports. Number 21 in the nation, y'all, for national universities. Right? And some of you might want to know what constitutes a national university. Well, among other things, right, among other things, as I was telling some students this morning, you know, we have students at FAMU currently from over 25 over 35 states and 70 countries, right? So you might say FAMU is an international university because of our reach and because of the impact of our brand. You can't not go anywhere in America without running into somebody from FAMU, right? And they know damn well not to say FAMU, right? <laughs> now, there's still some people out there who are saying BCC, but nobody's out there who went to this institution are gonna say FAMU, right? One year, just to let you know how tough these rattlers are, you know, we marched in the Rose Bowl Parade. Have y'all ever been to California? But anyway. <laughs> we marched in the Rose Bowl Parade, and, and what's the uh, weather person who was announcing it? Um, Al Roca. So if the hunter was making that turn, and y'all have to go down and see it for yourself, there's a place <laughs> where they make that turn in, in front of the grandstand, and Al Roker made the mistake and said, and here are the marching 100 of FAMU. And then they went to commercial, right? <laughs> when they came back home from commercial, Al Roker said, please, Rattler, stop. Please don't email, don't text me, stop calling my wife and grandparents. I will never say FAMU again, right? He apologized on national television because he knew better because of these rattlers out here who take and carry so much pride in the institution that has done so much for them. And it's such a privilege for me to be at the helm of this institution 
at this particular time. But just like Bethune-Cookman, you know, I stand on the shoulders of 11 other great leaders who were in this seat. And all of them, in one way or the other, made contributions to get us to this point. We just celebrated on October the 3rd 136 years of excellence with Kerry. But we're just getting started, y'all. I mean, we got a long way to go. We got a lot of good things to do. And we're going to work collaboratively with Don Cookman and anybody else who wants to improve themselves <laughs> by associating with the Rattlers. You know, I, I have enjoyed every one of those terms as interim president. All of them were different circumstances. But when the, this board selected me to be the, quote, permanent president, I do say that in quotes. Doug Perry, because I know there's no such thing as a permanent president in higher education, but people use that term too loosely. But when they selected me to be president of FAMU, I was so overwhelmed, I just didn't know what to do. So I tried to call Bethune Cookman and ask them, did they have any pointers, right? What can y'all tell me about being the president of one of America's finest institutions? And they hung up the phone. <laughs> I said, sir, you know, it seems like I'm on my own. So I started calling Rattlers and I began to put it together. It is an awesome responsibility to sit at the helm of any of these institutions, whether you're in there as an interim, because you still have to do the job, right? The job has to be done. There are young men and women every single day who are counting on us and counting on you, right, to help support them. And as I said last night, we're going to have to do a much better job of that, right? Now, we need to get our fair share in Leon County, Volusia County, the state of Florida, and the federal government, the private sector. <laughs> but as Wildcats and Rattlers, we are going to have to do more. We just can't rely upon other folks to take care of us, right? <laughs> now, I asked this question last night, you know, how many of the people in the room last night actually paid? And I'll ask you all again, too. How many people here actually paid? Do you all know how much money it costs Reggie Theus and Tiffany Don Sykes to run these athletic programs? Do you all know? I mean, you shouldn't ever think about getting anything free. You ought to be thinking about what can you do to help these institutions be better. <laughs> And I know it, it sounds simple. What well, is just another seat at the table? You already bought the table, Mr. President. Why can't I just sit down there? Well, we had to pay for that table, right? And that money didn't come out of the air. It came from other sources that could have been used to support some of our outstanding students at our university. And so I just want to just, just encourage you to do more to support these institutions. I like to say, uh, don't give until it hurts. Give until you go numb, right? Give until when you come home, your spouse looks at what you've done, she gets that or he gets that bank account statement, credit card statement at the end of the month and says, Judge Perry, what the hell did you do? <laughs> That's the level of giving you need to give to help transform these institutions into the financial level of financial stability that we need to continue to move forward. I'm so proud of our Rattlers and our friends. We've had three record years of giving. You just saw the number uh, on the board, $25.7 million garnered in the last year. And I have to give a huge thank you to Dr. Shante Friday-Stroud. and her development team for making that possible, as well as our foundation board of directors that won't let us spend a dime of that money inappropriately. So thank you guys for being the steward of those resources. We're going to spend them the right way to advance our institutional mission, which is primarily, primarily focused upon student success. Now, we do a lot of other things, and all of those things are important. But in the end, what really matters is how these young people were sitting back here looking glamorous 
you know, as our representatives of the royal court and our football teams and cheerleaders, that's what really matters, right? And we have to do more to support them because the world isn't going to be right without them in it. Thank you all very much. Mm -hmm.